My name is Tanvi, and I talk to strangers on Skype for a living. Three times a week, I spend 30 minutes talking to a person I've never met before, who lives in a different country, and who doesn't even speak English, just to chit-chat about our lives. The reason for this is I work at Microsoft Research with an amazing team of people on a product called Skype Translator, where we enable people to have normal conversations over a regular Skype call. Only difference? They're speaking in completely different languages. There's a ton of science that goes into making this happen. Deep neural networks, machine learning, speech recognition. But you know what? The science of translation isn't what I want to talk about today. What I want to focus on is the human experiences of a live translated call. What do we learn from people speaking Spanish, Italian, Chinese? and what that teaches us about user expectations from translation, and what that teaches us about conversation flow. So here are the top three things I've come away with after months and months of talking to strangers online. One, all these voices in my head. With Skype Translator, there are two people talking, but really four voices in the room. These include your own, your translated voice, the person you're calling, and their translated voice. Understandably, this is extremely overwhelming to hear. In fact, it's a little bit like watching Fox News panel debates. <laughs> Everyone's talking at the same time, but all you feel is nervous. So we needed a couple of fixes for this. The first thing we tried is we tried to remove two out of these four voices. We said, why make the user listen to a language they don't understand, right? So we removed the user's translated voice and the partner's original voice. Turns out that doesn't work, because users are using the audio, even if it's in a language they don't understand, as social cues for when it's their turn to talk. If they don't hear what their partner hears, how would they know it's time for them to respond? The solution that ends up working is a technique called audio ducking. Both audio is played at the same time, but the volume is lowered in the language the user doesn't understand, but it's loud enough that they know it exists. The second problem we have with Skype Translator is that conversations get obscene, and obscene in four different languages. And the reason for this is there's a high frequency of profanity in our training data, so Skype Translator adds bad words in perfectly civil conversations. <laughs> so we took a database of bad words, and we said every time there was a match, Skype would say the word beep instead. So my coworkers and I spent a really odd evening. We cursed at our computers and tried beeps in different volumes and pitches and lengths just to find the right beep that is said every time there is the profanity on Skype. The third thing we've learned from watching people use the Skype translator is speech recognition isn't a perfect science. And sometimes it's just way off the mark, especially for people with regional accents or children. So this one time, I was talking to a middle-aged lady, and she was speaking in Spanish, and we were discussing our bucket lists. And the translator suddenly goes, I want to have sex on the mountain. <laughs> that got awkward really quickly. So we needed a solution for misrecognitions like that. And we tried a couple of different things. When the user's speech wasn't getting recognized well, we tried to tell them, type instead. Another thing we tried is try to get users to click on a big cancel button if their, if their uh, speech wasn't getting recognized well. But turns out none of these solutions were really sticking because users are so unwilling from leaning back and speaking to Skype to typing and clicking that they just didn't want to do the work. So the solution that ended up working was a really simple one. Just reminding users, repeat yourself. Repeat yourself when you're stuck. And that seems to work for most people and until it, uh, Skype gets what they've said right. Oh, out of curiosity, I went back to Sex on the Mountain Lady and looked up her transcript. Turns out that wasn't a mistranslation. That's what she really said. <laughs> so that's the core of our problem with Skype Translator. People seem to go so quickly from, oh my god, you've built the universal translator to, wait, why doesn't this thing work perfectly each time? So there's a sweet spot in the middle somewhere a sweet spot where people trust this technology just enough for personal and professional sustained conversations without really expecting the perfection they see in science fiction. So go home, call your multilingual friends from Skype Translator. We would love to hear what you think. Thank you.